So now we want to extend the previous lecture. We want to cover the circle with three sets. So let us first focus on this piece. So if you have a section here, this section obviously maps to the same section here because U1, U2 and U3 are all connected components. U1 is connected, U2 is connected, U3 is connected and they are subsets of S1. So if there is section S here on S1, this will be same section on U1, U2 and U3. So this is not that interesting. So now we have understood how to grow from S1 to U1, U2 and U3. So this part we know. Now we want to go to the second part. So say there are sections here. So say there is section S1 here, section S2 here and section S3 here. Now we want to go to F of U12. So this F of U12, this comes from two places. So there are two arrows coming into it. One arrow is coming from here. The other arrow is coming from here. So these two elements will combine to form an element here. So let us see this. So this S1, you write it as S1 2 hat because 2 is missing. 2 hat means 2 is not there. And this S2, you write as S1 hat 2. And then you multiply it with the position of the missing index. Okay. So this is what we did in previous lecture also. So this is how you get element of F U12. What about U13? This comes from two places. One it comes from here and it comes from here. So this S1 is U13. This S1 you map it to S1 3 hat. This 3 is missing and then this S3 this basically is S1 hat 3. 1 is missing. So this 3 is missing from position 2. Notice that I am saying 3 is missing from position 2 because there are two positions here 1 and 2. Similarly there are two positions here 1 and 2. So this you multiply by minus 1 raised to the power of missing position that is 2 plus minus 1 raised to the power of 1. So basically this is the formula you are going from f of ui to f of u i1 i2 you first arrange the indices that you have lower index here and higher index here so 1 2 1 3 and here 2 3 so if you apply this d0 to it instead of d0 i'm just writing d d of s so d of s will lie in here so i1 i2 this is minus 1 raised to the power of 1 if the first index is missing plus minus 1 raised to the power of 2 when second index is missing. So here the first index was missing, 1 is missing from S3 and here 3 is missing from S1. Now we apply this formula to F, this U23. This is coming from two places. This is coming from here and here. So let us see this. So first I will take this element. This is 2, 3. So you write S, 2, 3. So this is coming from S2. So 3 is missing. So this S2, 3 looks like this. Yeah, this 3 is missing. Set second index is missing. So I have 2, 3. Second index is missing. So you have minus 1 square plus now focus on this part S3. So 2 is missing. So you have S 2 hat 3. So this is something here. You have 2, 3. You have 2 hat and 3. So first index is missing. So minus 1 raised to the power of 1. So this is how you get this. And this makes your life really easy because now this section here on FS1, any section here, this S section here, this will get mapped to S1 will be S, S2 will be S and S3 will be S. And you feed this here, you will get opposite signs. You have, will have this S1 is just S, S1 is just S minus S2. So S1 minus S2 which will be 0 here. Here it will be 
s1 minus s3 s3 is also s which is 0 and here you will have s2 minus s3 so s2 is s s3 is s this will be 0 so elements here get mapped to 0 here precisely like it happened the previous case so now I'm going to rewrite each of these elements so what is this so this is nothing but s1 minus s2 this one square will be one so this is nothing but s1 minus s2 so let us write this down this is s1 minus s2 what is this part this is s1 minus s3 so I'm just ignoring the hats now and multiplying out by minus one square and minus one and this is nothing but s2 minus s3 so this is another way of writing so these two expressions are precisely the same because this hat just denotes the missing index these two expressions are precisely the same these two expressions are precisely the same so if you are coming from section is coming from here s then this becomes s minus s which is 0 s minus s 0 s minus s 0 because this s will get mapped to s1 this s will be same as s2 this s will be same as s3 so now I'm going to uh, rewrite each of these uh, indexes properly so we want a complex so we want a complex so we want this s1 s2 and s3 get mapped to 0 here so what should we choose here so again we will have we have this case here so we have this map d1 what this d1 does is take section s from here so this section s for example here is consists of three parts s1 minus s2 s1 minus s3 s2 minus s3 so this product ranges over three things so product is so this is nothing but so this part is nothing but f of u12 times f of u13 times f of u23 so this section when you apply d to it so instead of d1 i'm just writing ds so ds you will end up in 1 2 3 so i'm writing i1 i2 i3 so again this element is coming from 1 2 so this is this is coming from 1 2 so this is coming from this 1 2 index here so you write it as here you write it as s 1 minus s2 and this is coming from 1 2 3 hat this 1 2 3 I copy here 1 2 3 1 2 3 then this s1 minus so in f u 1 2 3 is coming from three places it is coming from here I have recorded it the part coming from here has second index missing so you have s1 minus s3 then you have 1 2 hat 3 and this part is s2 minus s3 and you have 1 hat 2 3 so if you have 3 hat here then you multiply this by so this is 3 hat but luckily all these 3 are on the third position 1 2 3 the position is important position is important so this position is number 3 third position is missing so you multiply this minus 1 to the power of 3 so this is precisely this one so you get this one here so this will give you minus of s1 minus s2 so we have done this part now here the second position is missing and you have so to this you add this position this part which is plus minus 1 to the power of 2 second position is missing so that is precisely this part so you have plus s1 minus s3 and finally you have here you have the first position missing so that is this part and you get minus s2 minus s3 and now you do the cancellation you can see this is minus s2 plus s3 plus s1 minus s3 minus s1 plus s2 so cancel out this cancels out this cancel out you get 0 so you see s1 s2 s3 they all map to 0 so we indeed have a complex and this is the way to write the complex 
So the idea is you first order it. Again here you order it. So if you have one three, you write one first and three next, and then you see which is the missing position. So here if the first position is missing, you write one. Second position is missing, square. Here first position is missing, write one. Second position is missing, square. Third position is missing, three. So this was really easy, but here you had to think before. So, so one, three, you know why minus sign is coming here because first position is missing. And here you had, so notice that when we started, you multiplied this uh, S1 with minus one square, although three is missing, but three was in second position. So you get a complex like this. You have this F of S1, then you have this, 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 and then you put a zero here. Now this we generally drop out. That is precisely because if you find out the homology of D0, that is precisely F of S1. Yeah, because this map, this map gets uh, mapped to zero. This F of S1 will get mapped to zero. We have seen that, yeah, section just gets mapped to zero with this D0. So we have seen S minus S will give you zero. So this you always drop and you call this. So let us, instead of I, let us write this as I1. So this you call as C0. So I1, C0, then you have two indexes here, one and two. This you call as C1 and so on. So in general, so here we covered by three sets. So that's why it ended here. So if you cover by four sets, then uh, you, know, you will have another index here. So if you had four sets, then you would have this here, you had I1, I2, I3, and then you have F of UI1, UI2, and then UI3. So in general, you could cover by any number of sets. So C superscript T, you go from one to T plus one. So in zero, you had I1, in one, you have I1, I2, in two, so this, if there were uh, four sets covered, so this would have been C2, it has three indexes and so on, you know, so this is the indices. So you, if it is one, it will be C0. If it is uh, two here, then it will be C1. And if it is T plus one here, it is T. So this DS, if I take a section here, and this section would lie in many pieces, just like a section here, a section here basically lies in many pieces. So this DS you are taking, so DS would land here. So similarly, if you take S here, DS lands in CT plus one. So this uh, D zero you're calling as D. So you apply D to here, you land in D one, then you apply D to here, you land in uh, C two. So um, again, you know, if you land in uh, CT plus one, you will have t plus two indexes, one, two, three, four, all the way to t plus two. There's always one. So ct corresponds to t plus one. So t plus one will correspond to t plus two. So then you start uh, summing over uh, like this. Yeah. So minus one to the power of one, when the first index is missing, other two are there. Then minus one to the power of square, the second index is missing and then third index is missing or for the kth index missing you have this. So this is just generalization of this. So now you have a check complex like this in which the zeroth term is precisely is precisely this. First term is this and then you're covering by n sets. So if you covered by three sets you will just have uh, so you cover by three sets you have 0, C0, C1, C2, and then you have zero, which is our case here. We are not considering this. So this is C0, this is C1, and this is C2, and then you are zero. So in case, so you're covering by three sets. If you cover by four sets, you will have zero, C0, C1, C2, C3, and zero, and then four sets and so on. So you have a check complex and you can say you're covering by n sets. And in that case, this is the D to go from one to another. So this you can call as D0, this you call as D1, but basically this is the formula. And the only thing you need to check is decompose with D is zero.
and if you check this you have a check complex once you have a check complex you compute the cohomology groups